this is a continuation of the notes. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and let's see how we do. Example one. This means that we're taking the derivative with respect to y. So, so we're taking the derivative with respect to y, the derivative of a 2y cubed is just going to be 6y squared minus 5 sine y. And that's it. Because it's with respect to y. And I, that's it, guys. <laughs> All right, the derivative of this one, I'm taking the derivative with respect to u. So it's going to be 10u. Uh, the derivative of a cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be plus 3 sine u. And that's it. Now on this one, this is the type of questions you guys had the issue with. This one says take the derivative with respect to x. So here we go. What's the derivative of 10? All right, secant squared, leave the x, y alone. And then I got to take the derivative of the inside. I got to do what rule? Product x first times derivative of the second, dy dx, plus second derivative of the first, 1, equals, and the derivative of x is just 1 because I'm taking it with respect, to, with, with respect to x, and the derivative of y is dy dx. All right, next, I need to find dy dx. So I'm going to distribute because I need to get dy dx by itself. So I can't do that until I distribute that. So here we go. We're going to have x dy dx secant squared xy plus y secant squared xy equals 1 plus dy dx. Move the dy dx to the left move this term to the right. So now we have x dy dx secant squared xy minus dy dx equals 1 minus y secant squared xy. Now we're going to factor out the dy dx. So by now we're probably borderline professionals, right? dy dx x secant squared xy minus 1 equals 1 minus y secant squared xy. And then finally, divide by whatever you have in front of the dy dx. So dy dx equals 1 minus y secant squared xy over x secant squared xy minus 1. Nothing cancels out. Do not cancel anything out. How do we feel? We don't feel okay. okay. What? Okay. Where did I? Where did I? All right. Well, let's do some more. All right. For the relation, square root of x plus y equals three x. Find the value of x for which dy dx equals seventeen and y equals eight. Hmm. Hold on, guys. How many unknowns do I have? One. Can I solve for y now? Nope. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite it. x plus y to the half equals 3x. Here we go. Let's get an equation in terms of dy dx, x, and y. So move the half to the front. Oops. So. 1 half x plus y to the negative half. And then I got to take the derivative of the inside. 1 plus dy dx. Are we still okay? Equals, and the derivative of 3x with respect to x is 3. I have a y value. Well, I guess let's fix it. Let's fix it first. So I have uh, 1 plus dy dx over 2 square root x plus y equals 3. 
I'm gonna insert my y value of eight and my dy dx value of 17, and I'm gonna solve for x. That makes sense, guys? So here's what I have. One plus 17 over two square root of x plus eight equals three times times, I'm just gonna multiply the whole denominator there. So I'm gonna have uh, 18 equals three times two is six square root of x plus eight. Are we still okay? I'm gonna divide by six. 6, 12, 18, so it looks like 3 equals square root of x plus 8. I'm going to square both sides. 9 equals x plus 8. And then I'm going to subtract 8. Oh, that wasn't any fun. I just got 1. I wanted better. Uh... I guess, that's fine. There it is, it's one, that's it. Core, not cool. I thought it was gonna be more fun, but oh well, that's fine. Example four, uh, find dy dx. So by now, hopefully these are getting really simple for you guys. So move the six to the front, right Viacana? And then x plus y to the fifth power, am I done? Times the derivative of the inside, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, so one plus dy dx equals the derivative of two x is two. We still okay? Consider all this that I'm underlining as one term, guys. If you wanna substitute, you can, you can call that a. So this is like, like a parenthesis one plus dy dx, equals two. So I'm calling all this A, I'm not gonna do that, but you can, see? That's like that. All right, here we go. I'm gonna distribute. You don't have to do the sound effects. And then I go six parentheses X plus Y to the fifth power. Plus, I'm gonna write six dy dx. You can put the dy dx in the back, but I decided to put it here in the front, guys x plus y to the fifth power, all that equals two. I'm gonna move whatever does not have a dy dx, I'm gonna move this expression to the right. Six dy dx, x plus y to the fifth power equals two minus six x plus y to the fifth power. I don't see any mistakes. I'm gonna divide by everything except the dy dx. So six x plus y to the fifth power, six x plus y to the fifth power. And here's what you get. You get dy dx equals two minus six x plus y, fifth power all over six x plus y to the fifth power. Is it getting easier? Uh, yeah, it can, it can, but I'm gonna leave it like that. Did Delta Math want to simplify? Say it again. Yeah, it means I want my dy dx and I want the expression to have x's and y's. Yeah, this one wants a slope. Yeah, this one wants a slope at 2, 1. All right, so here we go, guys. I want the slope. I'm gonna go do good old fashioned derivative with respect to x. How much room do I have? Okay. The derivative of y, do not say y prime, say dy dx. dy dx minus four times three is 12. 12 y squared dy dx plus, 2x equals negative 2y dy dx plus 1. Get all the dy dx's together on the one side and move everything else to the other. 
So I'm going to move the 2y dy dx to the right. So I'm going to have dy dx plus 2y dy dx minus 12y squared dy dx equals 1 minus 2x. I don't see any mistakes. I think everything is still pretty good. I'm going to factor out a dy dx. When I factor out a dy dx, I'm going to have 1 plus 2y minus 12y squared equals 1 minus 2x. And then from there, I'm going to divide to get the dy dx by itself. So dy dx equals 1 minus 2x over 1 plus 2y minus 12y squared. So now I'm going to evaluate. dy dx evaluated at 2, 1. You guys ready? I'm just going to plug in. Hey, Godinez. 1 minus 2 times the x value is 2. I just got that from the coordinate there. Over 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 12 times 1 squared. I didn't do anything crazy, guys. I just plugged in. Let's see. 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. Uh, 1 plus 2 minus 12. 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 12. Oh, dummy. Uh, negative 12, 11, 10, 9. Yep. So negative 3 over negative 9, that's a one-third. Here we go. Now we can, we can move. Uh, so question one, this is a pretty popular question. It says, if x, y equals 2 minus x, then find the second derivative at the point negative 1, negative 3. So I'm going to find my derivative. I have to do implicit. So I'm gonna do product rule in the beginning. So first, times the root of the second, and maybe use parentheses, maybe not, it doesn't matter. Plus second times the root of the first equals, so I'm done with that, equals the derivative of two, which is zero, the derivative of negative x, which is negative one, because I'm taking the derivative back to x. So now you're gonna find dy dx. So x dy dx plus y equals negative one, x dy dx equals negative one minus y, divide by x, divide by x, dy dx equals, and I kind of am tempted to factor out a negative in the numerator, but I'm gonna leave it. And I know that they want the second derivative, so to make life easier for me, I'm gonna find what dy dx is at negative one, negative three negative one minus a negative three over negative one. So that turns to a plus, negative one plus three, that's gonna be a two divided by negative one. So I get negative two. I don't think I've made any mistakes. Let's continue. I'm gonna find my second derivative now. So I start from here and I go second derivative. So second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to bottom, and this time I am going to use parentheses everywhere regardless, times the derivative of the top, which is going to be just a negative dy dx minus top times the root of the bottom, low d high minus high d low, all over low low. And now I'm just going to plug in, guys. I'm going to plug in a negative 1 and negative 3. So second derivative evaluated at negative one, negative three. That's a, that's a three, it just came out nasty there. Negative three is equal to, what happened? So I have a negative in the bottom, divided by negative one. Oh, oh. Well, that's all goodness. So I'm plugging in my x value, negative one, so I have a neg. oh, you're talking about this neg dy dx? Yeah, yeah, the derivative of a negative y, right? Uh, I'm gonna plug in a negative, negative, so that's gonna turn into a two, and then negative one minus a negative three, 
and that's times one, so I don't have to worry about that, all over negative one squared. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna put arrow over here, because I have space over here. So it looks like I have negative two minus uh, negative one plus three, that's another two, all over one when I squared it. Negative two minus two, it looks like a negative four. So my answer looks like it's just negative four. I don't see any mistakes. Sometimes I make mistakes, guys. Well, I'll, you know, I make mistakes often, actually. Uh, but I don't see I don't see anything that would drive me to make mistakes there. Uh, are you guys okay with that? Is that a yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at this one. It says. If negative 4xy minus 2 equals negative 2y to the 4th plus x cubed, then find the equations of all tangent lines to the curve when y equals negative 1. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, this is the first thing I always do. I always get coordinates first. Now, I know delta math does not always do that. Delta math takes the derivative and then finds coordinates. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, they do find the coordinates first? Because I was looking at some and they, uh, like on um, one of them, like where they give you the derivative, like find the tangents and then they where they're vertical or and yeah always find your your coordinates first all right so here we go negative one i'm plugging a negative one negative four x times a negative one minus two equals negative two negative one to the fourth plus x cubed so let's see negative times a negative is a positive so four x minus two equals that negative one to the fourth is a positive negative 2 plus x cubed. These twos are going to cancel out. I can hear the crow. Can you guys hear the crow? Uh, it's out there looking for food, I guess. Uh, 0 equals x cubed minus 4x. I move the 4x to the other side. And now I can just factor out an x. And I want to have x squared minus 4. So here are my three solutions. x equals 0 x equals 2, x equals negative 2. So now all those are coordinates. 0, negative 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 1. Unless I made a mistake, but I don't see any mistakes. Now I'm going to find my tangent. So here we go. I'm going to do product rule. I'm going to group the negative with the 4x. So that's how I'm going to do my product. So I'm finding dir. Finding dy dx. All right, first, times root of the second. The second times root of the first. I'm taking everything with, with respect to x. Uh, minus zero, because the derivative of a constant is zero, equals negative eight y cubed dy dx plus three x squared. All right, you're going to get all the dy dx's on one side. So here we go, guys. So I'm going to write negative 4x dy dx plus, maybe I should have written the plus one first, 8y cubed dy dx equals 3x squared plus 4y. I'm going to factor out my dy dx. And I'm going to write it, I like to have the positive one first. So I'm going to write 8y cubed minus 4x. And now I'm going to divide. So dy dx is equal to 3x squared plus 4y over 8y cubed minus 4x. So now, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find my slope at all three of those points. Do we understand that? Okay, dy dx at point 0, negative 1 equals 3 times 0 plus 4 times negative 1 over 8 times negative 1 to the third 
minus 4 times 0. Careful. I have negative 4 divided by negative 8. I don't see any mistakes. That is a half. So from that, here's my tangent line. That's a semicolon, so now I can start a new statement. Y plus 1, Y minus Y1 equals uh, slope 1 half. And you don't have to put the zero because it's zero, but I already put it, so too bad. X minus zero. You could just say one half X, it's the same thing. That's one tangent. Let's find the other one. Did I use different colors? Right. Dy dx at two negative one. Three times two, uh, is that squared? Yes. I didn't put the square in the last time, but it didn't matter because it was being, uh, it was times zero. Make sure that my math is right, guys. Plus four times negative one all over eight times negative one to the third minus four times two. Make sure that my math is correct. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 minus 4 over, let's see, negative 8 minus 8. All right, on this one, I'm glad I got this one here. On this one, I get 8 over, oh, actually, no, I thought I was going to zero out, negative 16. It does not zero out. By the way, we'll, we'll talk about it right now. So this slope is a negative half. Does everyone agree? Semicolon. Here's my statement. Y plus 1 equals negative half x minus 2. By the way, here's my statement, guys. Side note. If you get... If you get a number in the top divided by zero, comma, you have a vertical tangent. Meaning your equation is going to be x equals something. x equals some number. I'll put c. Say it again. Yes, because that means your slope is zero. By the way, it's only if you get a number divided by zero. If you get zero over zero, that's actually something special. And we're not going to get there because we're in calculus AB. But zero over zero does mean something. Uh, but we're not going to be there because we'll wait for your professor to tell you about that. We're not trying to confuse you right now. All right, let's do the last one. Dy dx. What was my last coordinate? Negative two, negative one. Negative two, negative one. So here we go. Three times negative two squared plus four times negative one all over eight times negative one to the third power minus four times negative two. Okay. So negative 2 squared again is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 4 over, uh, I'm going to have a negative 8 right here. And then look at that. I guess I should have waited for this one. This one is going to be, so you know what? I'm going to move this to 8 over 0. And I'm going to move this one right here. So that's your side note. And then pretend all this is written in black. Okay, all that is written in black. If you can't, if you think it's blue, you're colorblind. I'm kidding, guys. All right, I have a vertical tangent. If I have a vertical tangent, that must mean that x has to equal negative 2. Let's test this. Do you guys want to see a graph? Yeah. Don't just be convinced by me, just me saying it. Let's see the graph. 
you know, because this is math. So let's see, back it up. You can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? Okay, I'm trying to be tough, but uh, that, that came out stupid. So I'm not going to, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Tiff is not entertained. She's like, whatever. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, that's, oh, you guys can't see. I should, here is Desmos. Well, it's not Desmos yet, but that's a cute puppy there. Uh, Desmos, graphing calculator. And I already forgot the equation, so you guys are gonna hook me up. It was, I remember it was a negative. Negative four XY minus two equals negative. 2y to the fourth power plus, plus what? x to the third. Oh, look at that. It looks, it looks like some ugly thing. I mean, I guess it's, I shouldn't call it ugly, but yeah, all math is beautiful. All right, let's see. First, let's give the points. So let me give order points that I got. What point? Zero, negative one. Should I label this? Nah. Comma. Two. Actually, you know what? I better put it in a separate one because I want it to come out. Yeah. Uh, give me the next one. Two. They're all negative ones, right? All right, give me the third one. Like that. All right, guys, those three points are on the graph. Let's see how the tangents look. Uh, give me my first tangent. Y plus one equals one half and then just x right yep that is definitely a tangent beautiful tangent all right what's the other one y plus one negative one half <laughs> i didn't know whether to put the fraction first or to parenthesis x minus two Yep, that is definitely a tangent for that green dot right there. All right, last one. X equals what? Wow, look at that, guys. Perfect. Isn't that beautiful? I think this is awesome. You guys don't think this is awesome? What about you guys? Do you guys think this is awesome, guys? Put it on my comments below on YouTube. No, but not you guys right now. It's a virtual class. Yeah, definitely. No, I think you can. I think you got to go and settings. There you go. We can always make it a different color. There it is, done. Look how beautiful all that is, guys. Oh my God. Okay, let's continue, guys. Virtual class, are you guys there? Yes. Did you guys enjoy that? I thought it was cool, guys. All right, uh, so here we go. If negative x, y minus five plus x equals negative y cubed, then it is known that dy dx equals that. Find all coordinate points on the curve where y is negative one and the line tangent to the curve is vertical. So I want undefined slope or state that no such points exist. All right, this is the one, I believe, this is the one where delta math does this equal to zero first and then solve for x. I would just go right into this expression immediately and get an x value. 
I want to know if it's even defined over there. So here's the first thing I'm going to do. They already tell you that y is negative 1. Negative x times negative 1 minus 5 plus x equals negative negative 1 to the third power. So that's going to turn into a positive x minus 5 plus x. And we'll, in a little bit, we'll combine them. Negative 1 to the third is a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Uh, 2x equals 6. x equals 3. Okay, that's the only point I have. 3, negative 1. That's the only point I have. So, in order for this equation or this relation, negative xy minus 5 plus x equals negative y cubed to have a vertical tangent. I must get dy dx to be undefined. And a specific undefined, I need to have some number in the top divided by zero. So let's find out. In the top, I know I get some number because y is negative one, negative one minus one is negative two. So we're good with the top. All I gotta focus on is the denominator. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. I needed to make sure, they're all gonna look like this, so delta math probably doesn't even mention it. Uh, I needed to make sure that I have a, a constant in the top and a zero in the bottom for it to be a vertical tangent. So, I get, I have a constant on the top. Negative one minus one is negative two. So I can divert all my attention to the denominator. I think all of them, you can just divert all your attention to the denominator because they don't give you guys anything extreme. So here we go. Negative x three plus three times negative one squared. Does this give you zero? It looks like it does guys. Negative three plus three. Check. Vertical tangent at three comma negative one. Uh, sometimes, in this case, no. Cool or not cool? All right, let's go to the next one. I want the slope to be four thirds. Do they give me a y value? No, they give me an x value this time. Plug it in directly, immediately into that. Negative one squared e equals negative negative one. Y, I guess I didn't have to put the y in parentheses there. Plus two plus y squared. Here's what I have. One equals y plus two plus y squared minus one minus one. Zero equals y squared plus y plus one. That's never gonna be zero. No such x coordinate. What does this mean, Chavez? Chavez, I don't understand. What are you talking about? What does it mean? Guys, what this means is that this graph does not exist at x equals negative one. So if I don't exist at x equals negative one, do I even have a, do I have any slope? No, because you don't exist. Do you guys want to prove it? Do you guys want me to graph it so you guys can see? How do, right here. That's never going to equal. If you were to do quadratic formula, you would not get a number. If you were to say, uh, if you were to say y equals, uh, let's see, negative one plus minus square root, negative one squared minus four times one times one, all divided by two times one, you would get an imaginary number, something imaginary. Negative one plus minus some number in the front, imaginary, or I. If you wanna figure out what that number is, go for it. I'm not gonna bother. We're not dealing with imaginary numbers, we're dealing with real numbers. So that means this graph does not exist at x equals negative one. Watch me, watch me be wrong. No, it's not, there's no hole, there's a relation. 
it just never goes to it, the domain is not it, negative one is not part of the domain. You guys want to see the graph? Watch me be wrong, right? <laughs> uh, I'm right, by the way. I'm pretty confident. Guys, I, I live and breathe math. Of course I'm right. I love this. Uh, clear everything. All right, give me the equation. X squared. Was it, it was X squared immediately equals negative X, Y plus two plus y squared. Look, you don't exist. Negative one's right here. Or the air, oh, they can't see because I have not sharing that. Huh? Okay. You guys need to warn me, guys. I can't hear you guys. Okay, can you guys see it now? I didn't put it yes. in your screen. Okay, sorry about that. Here it is. Look at that. At x equals 1, I'm going to put x equals negative 1 here, just so you guys can see. This is not a tangent. I just want you guys to see that it does not touch ever. Look at that. That's x equals negative 1, that black line. It never touches it because it's not part of the domain. Nothing exists. So there's no such point. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. No such, really, I should have put no such y coordinate. No such y coordinate. Uh, so I'm going to put uh, so no such points exist. No such points exist. That's the answer. What was the question? Okay. All right, guys, let's keep going. I believe this one's coming from UH, because they have answer choices. So it says, find the second derivative in terms of x and y. All right, well, let's find the first derivative first. So negative 6x. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, guys. Plus, I'm going to group the 2 with the x. So there it is. That's how I'm going to do my, my, my product rule first. Times the root of the second, dy dx, plus second times the root of the first equals zero. Okay, you're done now. Now we're just doing algebra. Well, we're not done, done, but we're done. Uh, so I'm going to leave that here on this side. 2x dy dx equals, and I'm going to move everything to the right. So I like to write positive statements first. So 6x minus 2y. Now I'm going to divide everything by 2x. And yes, I would factor out a two in the numerator to make it simpler, to make life simpler for you, for yourself. Three X minus Y over X. I could divide both terms by X. I'm not sure if it's gonna make life simpler or not. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do quotient rule. You guys ready for quotient rule? Here we go. Second derivative. Bottom, low d high. Times the root of the top. 3 minus dy dx minus top. Times the root of the bottom. All over bottom squared. Let's see what we get. I'm going to distribute. So second derivative equals 3x minus x dy dx. Don't worry, I'm going to plug in dy dx in a little bit. Minus, I'm just going to distribute the negative, 3x plus y over x squared. I see, and I'll wait for you guys to catch up. I see that the 3x's are going to zero out. So here we go, negative x, and I'm plugging it back what dy dx was. 
dy dx was 3x minus y over x. From there, I distribute. The x's cancel out, but distribute the negative. Negative 3x plus y plus y over x squared. And I'll just combine. Negative 3x plus 2y over x squared. So there it is, guys. Do you feel okay, guys? Why is this button highlighted? Oh, maybe because I'm recording right now? Okay. You guys ready? And all yawning. <laughs> all right, here we go. Determine the value of x for which the derivative is zero. Given that, okay, this is straightforward. Find the derivative f prime of x, chain rule, bring the 2 to the front, leave the inside alone, negative 9x to the squared plus 4 to the power 1. I'm not going to bother with the power 1. Times the derivative of the inside, negative 18x. I want that to equal 0. The only way you're going to get a 0 is if x is 0 here, because 0 times anything is 0, or if the expression 9x squared plus 4 is 0, negative 9x squared. Okay, let's solve for that. I'm going to move the 4 to the other side. Negative 9x squared equals negative 4. You can drop the negatives. 9x squared equals 4. Divide by 9. x squared equals 4 ninths. Square root, square root. x equals plus minus 2 thirds. So what are the x values where the derivative is 0? So f prime of x equals 0. The square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. So, no, it's okay, man. So, f prime of x equals 0 when x equals 0, comma. Do I have enough space? x equals negative 2 thirds, comma. x equals 2 thirds. I'm going to just write a list, which is perfectly acceptable. But because I started a new column, I just said, never just write x equals everything. And there it is, guys. Okay, how are you? All right, guys. I'm hoping that I'm helping you guys. Hook me up with a thumbs up if you feel like you're making huge gains. Not right now, because. Right now we're live and we haven't posted anything on YouTube, but when it comes out. Uh, this time I want the derivative to be negative. So I'm going to find my derivative again. You kind of, you okay? I'm sorry, miss. I'm wired today. I had a lot of coffee. I tried a new coffee and I didn't know how strong it was going to be. It has three <laughs> shots of espresso. And you can taste it too, you can taste the caffeine. I mean, I don't know if caffeine even has a taste, but it's definitely, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, miss. Two, parentheses, negative x squared plus nine, close it to the power one, times the derivative of the inside, negative two x. I am gonna equal it to zero first, so I can find what is called a critical number. Like something's happening at the critical numbers. So first I equal it to zero and I say, okay, well x equals zero will give me zero. And then I'm gonna go negative x squared plus nine equals zero. So negative x squared equals negative nine. I would have moved the x squared to the right, but I like having the x squared on the left. Drop the negatives, x squared equals nine. Square root, square root, x equals plus minus three. I'm gonna do a number line. Here's my number line. It goes forever to the left and forever to the right. 
I put the three critical numbers that I got, zero and plus minus three. I'm gonna label my critical, I'm gonna label my line F prime. All you care about, all you care about is whether you get a positive or a negative. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna plug in numbers. Chavez, where are you plugging in numbers to? I'm plugging in numbers into the derivative because I wanna know where the F prime is positive and where the f prime is negative. Really, I want to know where the f prime is negative. All right, I choose the number to the left of negative three, like negative five. The negative is there, it's stuck there. So negative five squared is 25. I have a negative in the front. Negative 25 plus nine is a negative number. So this is negative. Negative two times a negative five is a positive number. That's a positive. Negative times a positive is a negative. I choose a number like negative two. Negative two squared is a number, but I have a negative in the front, so negative four. Negative four plus nine, positive or negative? Positive. Negative two times negative, uh, I said negative two, right? Negative two times negative two is a positive number, positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. I choose another number to the right of zero, like one. Net one squared is one, but it's negative there. Negative one plus nine is a positive number. Negative two times one, is that a positive or negative? Negative. Positive times a negative is a? Negative. And then finally, a number bigger than three, like five. Five squared is 25, put a negative in the front. Negative 25 plus nine is a negative number. Two, negative two times five is a negative number. Negative times a negative? The only intervals you care about is where it's negative. I want that one, and I want that one. Negative infinity all the way till you reach negative three with a parenthesis, because it doesn't say equal to, it just says less than. So you want it to be negative, just period. Union, zero to three. Yes, it happens very often. Correct. It happens very often, actually, in calculus. And oh, I was already circling the wrong one. All right, let's keep going. I think this was from a practice exam, not an actual AP exam, because I can't post that on YouTube but a practice exam somewhere, like one of, well, some, an exam on my file somewhere. Do you guys wanna take the time and see if you guys can do it? All right, so take about a two minute head start guys, uh, send me a DM and I'm gonna start the timer now. What you guys get? Oh, don't say the answer. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start because it looks like most of y'all already getting your answer. Have you guys got an answer? All right, here we go. What I would do with that negative, I would probably group it with the X, but if you want, you can put a parenthesis on it and just distribute it later on. It's the same thing as long as your algebra is solid. I'm taking the derivative with respect to X, so 2Y dy dx plus, and I, like I said, I'm gonna group like that. First, times root of the second, plus the second, Right over the first, see? So you're gonna get both negative expressions anyway. Equals zero, two y dy dx minus two x dy dx minus two y equals zero. And maybe I'm being redundant, maybe you don't have to do all that. Uh, move the two y to the other side. Uh, so I'm gonna factor out a dy dx. <laughs> that was a tiny. Two y minus two uh, x equals 2y. It looks like I can just cancel all the y's out if you want to make life simpler for yourself. dy dx equals 2y over 2y minus 2x, which is the same thing as saying y over y minus x. I'm going to plug in the point 2, negative 3. So I'm going to come down here below this. dy dx at 2, negative 3 is equal to negative 3 divided by negative 3 minus 2 negative three, three, four, five, negative five, three fifths. 
Yeah, those guys are tricky. Did you guys get three fifths? All right, guys. Let's come back.